Philip finished his PhD in 96 uh, on well, working on the decay of um, sorry, working on, on the decay of uh, the Z balls and into two lattice plus the particles. But after these electronic studies, Pedro changed his activities to PCD, also at work, working on the Z decay into hydrophobic particles. Uh, but then Pedro started to start to be a little bit more interested in cosmic rays, especially in the high energy cosmic rays uh, uh, area. First, uh, with a little bit uh, on Kyoto, a satellite experiment that was at the time being planned. And in 2006, he joined Roger, which is, uh, as you know, the ground based detector that also we have a group here at the uh, but Pedro also started some very nice outreach activities that you also are very familiar with in 2003. Uh, and finally, in 2020, he became a professor at the IST, the physics department. And last year, Pedro was awarded the Premio Ciencia Viva on education. So today we have the pleasure of hearing uh, him talk about the international master classes in particular physics. Thank you. So Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you all for being here in presence and remotely. Uh, these are the contents, the topics that we'll try to cover. Uh, I'll try not to uh, go over my time, which is 45 minutes, something like that. Is it, can you confirm? I have to put in a clock. Otherwise, I'll speak too, too much. Uh, okay. Clock. Forty-five minutes to leave some time for questions. Uh, so I'll I'll use I propose to speak about the master classes, the international program, and uh, our Portuguese participation in this program as a tool to engage high school students and to motivate uh, to increase the interest of high school students to follow physics studies or physics engineering. So these are the topics of the, today's presentation. Uh, Masterclass started in 1997 and following a proposal meeting between these two people, Roger Barlow and Ken Long, uh, in October 1996. They tried to uh, increase the motivation of students to follow physics and the physics related courses. They proposed this in a meeting at the IOP, the Outreach Institute of, uh, in the UK related to physics. And they organized the first masterclass session in 1997, the year that celebrated also the discovery of the electron at Cambridge by J.J. Thompson. Uh, very recently, also, Roger Barrow won AOP's Lisa Magna Prize for its uh, outreach contribution, especially this launch of the masterclass program. So, in the masterclass, this is well described in the CERN Courier number, uh, January of 2004. So, in the master class activity, as most of you know, students, preferentially high school students, go to the University of Research Institute to spend a day in learning how scientists work. Uh, so, in the morning, they have talks about particle physics, or they do a small tour to the laboratory, or uh, they learn about the software they want to use. This is usually done in a large, in a large auditorium in a plenary session. This, for example, for number I'm speaking to ISD in 2007. Uh, then they have lunch with scientists. That's the only part of the program which is not compressed because the, the morning is highly compressed. The afternoon analysis is also compressed activity of the scientists and the conference that the lunch know. They take time to have the lunch, usually with the scientists participating, helping out the students later on. Then they go to the rooms, computer rooms, uh, and they uh, do real data analysis. Uh, usually simple analysis based on visualization of images. So the program was launched uh, in the UK in 1997 and by 1998 was already involving all the UK universities with high energy physics groups and with small variations in content and activities. Now, this was run in the UK for since then, but it's always run, uh, let's say, autonomously. But uh, in 1994, preparing, sorry, in 2005, in preparing for the World Year of Physics 2005, EPO, 
uh, in particle physics outreach group started in 2003, the time that I arrived, coincidentally, to develop a package and develop a program for adapting the masterclass program internationally. Uh, in the case of the software package which was being developed, and Zone 7 was the one used in Portugal, so the one that we translated into Portuguese, well, was translated by Dario Pastos and revised by me. And in this package, students analyze images from ZDKs into uh, hadron styles and electrons. They count, so they flare, they classify the event, the, what they are seeing, uh, to <coughs> measure the branching ratios of the Z, and at the end, estimate the number of possible quark colors of quarks, which is a very nice measure measurement resulting, simple resulting from the analysis of images like this. Um, then with the, the central organization prepared a website with a page per country and a page per institute. So this, for example, a recent, the last, the last institute added was the University of Madeira. As you can see in this image, how many institutes are already participating in the masterclass program from Portugal which is actually a very impressive number. Uh, at the end of this program, we prepared a CD that was offered to all the students containing the site, the software, the real data, plus several other uh, particle physics related activities that the students could carry on in the school. And the big novelty of the international program was a video link up at the end of the day, which actually was the thing that implied coordination between the well, central coordination and the institutes joining in the day and uh, of course a big risk was running we have to guarantee that uh, internet access remember this was 2005 internet access was reliable was uh, fast and allowing video video and audio connections with good quality uh, the video conference said the duration, then had the duration at, of 90 minutes, one and a half hour, for which the moderators, at least that CERN, would uh, circulate the institutes, analyzing the results from each institute with the students, and ending uh, after 2006, ending with a quiz to uh, make the ending of the video conference more fun and grab, grab the students until the end. The system for the video conference was the one using at CERN then, called VRBS. This is something that also the Masterclass program contributed extensively to the improvements of the video conference systems used at CERN. Following VRBS, we changed it for to EVO, for example, later on to video, and in, let's say, well, I shouldn't say thanks to the pandemic crisis, but actually Zoom come in in the pandemic year, and you all know Zoom is way better than all those systems. Uh, anyhow, both systems require a special hardware that we, one would need to fetch. At the time, these were Phoenix devices, what, we, what I call the magic box, that we had to, to buy and bring one to Portugal, and then they became more common with the time. At the time, also, the students received the CDs, but the winners of the quiz also won a T-shirt, or a pack of CERN decks, deck cards, pack of cards featuring CERN content. Uh, the first run in Portugal, well, the first run, international run was 7 to 9 March, so two weeks. For many years, in the beginning, there were only two weeks. Participated in 18 countries and 58 universities, institutes with 3,000, around 3,000 participants, uh, mostly high school students. In Portugal, we ran in three places. And also, for some years, we were running the places where Portugal LIP was present. And LIP was present in Coimbra uh, and Lisboa. And a small participation in Algarve that uh, joined the Masterclass program in 2008. So these were the places where we started the Masterclasses in Coimbra, Faculdade de Ciências de Universidade Lisboa and Instituto Superior Técnico. Uh, and we use it the ends on certain package based on Delphi data. Each group pair of students had to analyze under events and come to its conclusions at the final, at the end of the analysis. And this is a picture of, at the Faculty of Sciences of the uh, morning talks of the analysis done at IST by students at IST. Here also here supported by Fernando Barão. 
and uh, at the end of the day, the video conference was done actually at LEAP. In 2005, we did the video conference at LEAP. People, very old people, remember this was LEAP. Or some younger people do not recognize this image. This was our seminar room at the LEAP in the old premises, at the provisional premises in Avenida Luis Garcia. Uh, from these master classes, there was a whole inquiry made to the all participants. Not all responded, as usually, still the response was quite good. From the 3,000 participants, responded 1,200, not so bad. Um, and this was analyzed professionally by an education team from the Education Institute and was published preliminarily in a seven courier and then uh, professionally in the physics, in the physics Education Journal. Scientific journal. From these respondents, uh, they, they realized of okay, 31% female, 70% male. Uh, more than eight, about 81% said agree, agree totally to the lectures were the interesting questions, so they liked it, the lectures. And you can see the correlation, the strong correlation between the students that liked the lectures and the students that liked the master classes. So this is the like in the lectures, so agree, agree totally is this 81%, it's reflected in the of ours, as you can see, and uh, like it, those that like it, the lectures, like it very much the master classes, and you can imagine that those that didn't like the lectures at all, I mean, those few that disliked it very much the lectures, also didn't like too much the master class problem. So this strong correlation is likely understandable. And this sentence from uh, uh, stated in the same career, something that we talked about, like it very much, because it was recognized, you know, the, the Portuguese participants replied more than 90, about 96% choosing like it very much, much or very much. So these really, these two points, but much or very much like in the master classes. And this put these three countries in the highlight because it meant for them, for the authors, meant the uh, particularly interesting lectures and the bigger increase in knowledge of particle physics, which was the aim of the master class problem. Uh, in this graph, we also show, and it's also shown, that the it's relatively independent, the how likely the master classes to the pre-knowledge of particle physics. So even the students that knew nothing about particle physics, like it much, the master class problem. And notice also the error bars means that the number of students is reflected from these bars as well. So smaller error bars, more participants. Uh, the following years were still done in three places, in, in the case of Portugal, uh, in the same three sites, which were in the English were two places, the Faculty of Sciences and the Institute of Protecting. So it was a slightly increase in 2006, either international, so 3,000 to 3,100 as national, or number 40. But then in 2007, the increase started to be noticeable, actually quite big, because from the number of institutes, they grew from 60 to 74, number of participants also about 50%. And in Portugal, the same number of sites, but about more 50% of participants. Notice one day, the same day, 11 March, 24 March, both Saturdays. Whereas the international program still ran for two weeks in these two years. Uh, I'll speak about now what I make a break here, because actually later in 2007, something happened that has enormous importance in the evolution of the master class program, especially in Portugal, or mostly in Portugal. But I think that also in other countries happen more or less the same, which is recognizing the role of the teacher in bringing students to the master class program. So I'll very briefly describe uh, the importance of the teachers' programs at CERN, which were launched in 1998, the international teachers' programs, which were three weeks long, not only two. Uh, in July or August, taking time of the holidays of the teacher and with a very mighty participation of teachers from many countries. So typically a Portuguese teacher, one or two 
top Portuguese teacher participated in these programs. This is in 2019. This is the Portuguese teacher. Actually, she's now in Mozambique, teaching in Mozambique. This is the coordinator. Whereas, uh, uh, well, let me put the other program. I thought I did the other program. There was another Portuguese teacher in the other program in August, the International Teacher Weeks. Uh, Luis Afonso is actually now working at LEAP. Well, it has Portuguese Physics Society and that LEAP. So, uh, but in 2007, CERN launched the National Teachers Programs, meaning not only in the language of the member state, but much more important, with more opportunities per country. Now, the 48 participants were not coming from many countries, they were all coming from Portugal. Well, 43 participants were coming from Portugal. They are featuring in this uh, photograph. These programs, in the Portuguese participation in these programs started with Gaspar Guerreiro, to whom we owe a lot. Of course, you know all this. And uh, well, in this, in this picture, we also feature a minister. And uh, well, he also left us some years ago. Plus, the skinny researcher, Sofia Andrin, who is in the room. And the fat, the belly guy is me. So you can distinguish the two researchers easily, supporting the program. Uh, this program evolved to international in 2009. I had the idea following a, a suggestion, of basically a request what we could do to improve the dissemination of particle physics to underdeveloping countries. And uh, basically, I proposed that we could receive teachers from Brazil and Africa and speaking Portuguese speaking countries in our program, African and Asia, including East Timor. In 2009, we received a teacher from Brazil and Luxembourg. In 2011, we had a full house. These teachers from 2011 with teachers from all countries, all Portuguese speaking countries in the world. Only a Portuguese speaking region, not a country, is not here, Macau. I still hope to have a teacher from Macau participating in this program. Uh, and this is a statement of teachers, typical statement of teachers participating in these programs. In our program, we have many statements like this after the program, the evaluation from the teachers, that this is becoming, they recognize this is the most important training program that they have participated in. Uh, we were able to repeat this full house last year with the support of Institute Camões to pay the travels of the African and Asian teachers. And this is the, uh, the 48 teachers from all these countries that participated. In last year, and including in the picture, there are also two guides, one guy here, the other guy, uh, I don't know, I don't know anymore, uh, and two, three coordinators, Nelson, the Santa Claus, and the name somewhere here. Is, is Nelson, by the way, but uh, of course, with this beard, that belly. Okay, this is the statistics of the participation in the program, in the teachers' programs. So, Already 771 teachers have passed through this program at CERN in presence. Um, of those 448 Portuguese teachers. And this uh, was very important to build our network of teachers in the Portuguese schools, also in the Brazilian schools, of course, um, which is spread all over the country, all over Portugal, which enables us to uh, uh, when we have activities spread over the country, we have teachers motivated to participate in these activities. The evolution of the participation of the teachers in teachers' program at CERN, before the national programs, you can see here, per year, the two programs is basically 100. But when they started the national programs in all the countries, now they ran like, this is the number of programs, the, the blue line, so increase it from uh, about six programs up to 30, 40 programs. It's they stabilized in about 30 something. They ran 30, 33, 32 programs per year, which basically exhausts their capacity to receive these programs. And Portugal has one program. So Portugal is always one, don't forget, except 
nothing happened in 2020. I mean, only the problems in fact pandemic hit were able to be realized. Nothing in 2021, and we recovered the our national, our Portuguese language this is program in 2022. In 2021, we did a program online, but only for teachers that already participated. So this is not increased our network. Uh, and this is the map of the all participant teachers up to 2020, 13,000, meaning, now you can imagine how many students does this imply. Our math, our, let's say, back of the envelope calculations, say that the teacher contacts easily 100 students per year, probably it will work on average more than years, so we'll contact 1,000 students, which means, 13 million students will probably have heard about CERN, about particle physics, energy physics, and all alike. So, the number here is our participants in the national programs plus the ones in the international programs, which sum it up. But more important is you see the large numbers from Brazil, which is the largest country of others, listed of others, or from Mozambique. And in Gola, not so many, not so long. So, this is what puts uh, CERN in the, let's say, in these countries and the parts of Africa. I'll speak now about the evolution of the masterclass programs and present measurements, what are we doing today. When we started, there was only the Delphi data and the hands on CERN package. Uh, also, some analysis based on OPAL data, but not that much. So, this is the consequence of the teachers being at CERN is that when they are back, they want to do activities related to particle physics with their students. And when we propose the master classes, you can see that the increase starts to be really exploded up to the saturation. So basically what happened in 2000, since 2012 is that we saturated the capacity for us scientists to organize these programs and stabilized more or less at one equilibrium value of about 1,600 1, students per year, except in the pandemic years, which was, I would say, a disaster. But, uh, okay. This one was online only, which is uh, half the fun. But we got back on 2022, still not the previous numbers, but we are we hope to recover I'll speak at the end of the talk about this. Now, in 2010, that was actually the only time that the central coordination did a comparison between countries. We probably stopped doing this comparison because Portugal is here, you see. <laughs> and Germany is here. And, uh, and this is Italy. And Germany is here. The central coordination is German, by the way. Now, please also, this must be taken with a, a grain of salt because this is only the participation in the international program. That's not feature, for example, the national master classes and local UI institutes. And in the UK, of course, they run a lot of master classes outside the international program. But also in Germany, they do a lot of master class sessions outside the international program, which is not reflected in this data. This is only participation in the international program. But still, it's very nice to see that we have we had 2012, 1,300, and this number even grew later on. And uh, I mean, if you if you think about the population, then it's totally incomparable. Now, uh, in 2011, uh, after some strong pressure, we moved it to LHC data. So we left over uh, Delphi data, Opal data, and moved entirely to Atlas and CMS data. Uh, so there was also uh, CMS measurements and Atlas measurements. CMS did not so much need to be translated. It was a fully online web package, but the Atlas Z path and W path were fully translated to Portuguese. And uh, uh, this was also in line with the move of the European to international. Uh, so European Particle Physics Group in 2011 changing uh, the word to international particle physics outreach group. And also the CD is changing with a new logo, a new cover, new measurements, new experiments, all, all that. Uh, the evolution 
is striking. So in 2005, we have 3,000 students and uh, 58 institutes, 72 master classes. Now we have, we participate in 2019, 54 countries, 320 institutes, 15,000 students. And out of these 15,000, 1,600 1, Portuguese. So about 10% of the students are Portuguese in the international program. This is also reflected per year, so you see the growth. And again, I insist that the growth after 2007 is also strongly due to the, the national teachers programs run by the countries, uh, because this motivates the teachers to bring the students back to in contact with CERN and with particle physics in general. And this is <coughs> the growth in the number of institutes participating in CERN-based master classes or in the Fermilab-based master classes. The participation of Fermilab is, of course, very important, not only in modern institutes, but because of the time zone problem. The conferences are all, that's what links the different master classes is the video conference which of course must happen at the same time for all the institutes. And at the same time, it's not difficult in Europe being 3 p.m. Portuguese time or uh, 4 p.m. Southern time in Central Europe. But to make a video conference like we did in Faro uh, when we started in 2008, to specially connect to university in Riverside, University of California, Riverside, California, which is like seven hours away or eight hours depending on in the day of the month, in March, uh, meaning that for them to participate in video conference, they had to be at 7.30 sitting in university, 7.30 a.m., and their school was 150 kilometers away. So it was not easy for them, uh, not a problem for us, but not so easy for them. And uh, this is the map of the participation in 2019. Well, I decided not to show recent years because, well, it's a uh, bit uh, depressive, deprimant, but uh, okay, it's still 2019, you can see that Russia was, was not at war. And uh, um, you can see that this is the base, Fermilab based masterclasses, and this is the CERN based masterclasses. Fermilab, including Triumph, but also it's located about here, serves as a hub for these time zone masterclasses. Fermilab is about here the big legs. So it's three hours difference of uh, In terms of the, there is a, some special masterclasses. Portugal does not participate in this special masterclass, runs since 2017, which is a masterclass uh, uh, meant for women and girls, well, for girls, to uh, motivate the girls to follow, um, especially girls to follow science. So in this master class is basically, basically female lectures and tutors as much as possible. And uh, um, this is the program uh, for from 2019, the last, uh, the last time that was organized in, the, in presence in the great times, maybe 2022. Now, uh, these are some images from uh, this, process, this master class for women and girls in science. And you can recognize that not only women participate, of course. The students are not uh, restricted to be girls or women. It's just that to try to have women as teachers or as tutors and as moderators, as role models for the girls and the participants to see uh, more let's say, gender balance presence. Um, well, then we start changing, adding measurements. So historically, when we did 2011 was changed lab to LHC, but then we increased measurements from other experiments. The experiments that prepare the measurements start being proposed international program, neutrinos, uh, Fermilab-based Minerva experiment, Nova to come, Bell 2 in Japan, particle therapy, uh, and more recently, Pierre Roger Cosmic Ray, something that we developed in Portugal, the group of Raul Sarmiento and Sofia Andringa developed this last year, was tested in several, in two pilot runs already last year, and it's now featuring in the international program, but the international program is brand new. 
So the measurement, I will go very fast over the measurements, what's actually being measured. So in the case of the W plot, the students classify W bosons events, W boson decays. They basically in leptonic, so they just see one track, either positively or negatively charged, it should be a lepton. And if the le electron are muon, and if it is positive, it means it's a W plus. If it is negative, a W minus. They try to identify the charge of the Ws and make a ratio of the W plus or the W minus phases in the hope that uh, we understand what the proton is made of, because this is data from LHC, proton-proton collisions. So there is an excess of plus charge. So we should see an excess of W plus events uh, on the selected samples. And also, they, when they have W pairs, we should measure the delta phi angle in the transverse plane trying to gain insight into the process of discovering the X. It is an extremely difficult measurement. You can see from the statistics that is hardly learn anything from here, but it's the way to give, to put the Higgs name into the game and motivate a bit the students to do, uh, that participate in this analysis. In the Z path, uh, they select two leptons, uh, final events, either millions of electrons, uh, to try to reconstruct, uh, to build an invariant mass distribution and this rediscover the Z boson or other particles. They don't need to learn about invariant mass. This could be a difficulty given that they don't know relativity, or special relativity. But the calculation of invariant mass is actually done hidden by the program. So when they extract the data, they extract a list of invariant masses that they upload to a software developed especially from this path uh, in, by Oslo University, which is a full plot. And they can check now, uh, this is the result of all institutes on this day, 2016. So of course we see the Z, we don't see the values here. This is 100, this is 1000, this is 10, this is one. So this is the Z boson peak. And they should also distinguish between uh, muons and electrons if it's about the same number. This should be, I guess, the Upsilon peak. This should be j side peak. And this should be a nasty thing that we need to make sure that we discover what could be a Z prime or a graviton contribution to the plot. Of course, when the students learn this, they get a bit sad because it was not a new particle. It's just a, a prick that the uh, uh, scientists put there. No, but it serves the purpose that if there existed such a particle, they would have discovered it. And they learned that this is the tool that we use to actually discover new particles. So they learn this process of discovery, uh, how, how discovery gets done, how discovery particles is done at CERN. Uh, then the same as measurement that we do is basically the same, searching for Ws, Zs, and X bosons. Uh, the software is much nicer. I mean, this is flat, flat screen, 2D images. This projection, projection, nothing else. Seeing as software is totally wholesome. This is competitive with PlayStation professional games. So that's in 3D, it's fantastic. Uh, the authors insist that the students should decide on the charge by the curvature in the transverse plane of the selected track. This is something that I argue against since many years. I hope sometime we will implement a button here to allow us not to try to discover the curvature of a straight track. You can imagine it's very difficult. So the students lose a lot of time trying to discover, to classify the charge for the W boson. In the LHCB, uh, they try to search for these decays and to preserve a lifetime measurement. In the Pierre Roger Observatory, the brand new measurement that we are launching uh, this year international program to be 18 and 24 of March, uh, developed by Raul Sarment and Rick Rebail with Fiandringa. I just helped in spoiling the program. Uh, it's based on public data from the Pierre Roger Observatory, the software adopted with meaning, is based on the visualization of events, like these ones, but then the students have to after selecting some properties of the event, adjust parameters to fit this green curve to the data from the tanks. 
So by moving these slides, this thing moves. So the by high try to move the slides in a way that the curve best fits the data by high. And when it does this, the curve turns green before it's red. And when it's green and they are happy that it passes more or less through all the points within the row bars, of course, then if they are happy with the situation, they stop. They check the energy that comes here and the chi-square value. They check if they pass the criteria to select high energy events with a good fit to the, to the data. And the aim is selecting very high energy events in a way to be able to construct a map of the sky and discover if the cosmic rays are coming from the galactic galaxy, this will be the galactic plane, or from elsewhere. And this is the results of an analysis done by students in our pilot run. So this is not the official results of the OJK collaboration. Uh, then in Alice, something that we don't do because Portugal does not participate in the Alice experiment, they try to uh, study the enhance, enhancement of strangeness in the checkup of possibility of having a quite one plasma, or the shape side measurements, discovering shape side particles, and it's quite shape side yields as depending on the type of software, um, the type of events that they have selected. Uh, neutrinos in Minerva, and um, we tried to do a measurement of the, uh, with neutrinos, the structure of the nucleus of the carbon. And in the NOVA neutrino selection, we are just developing a software to study neutrino oscillations. I don't know much about this because I've never done these measurements myself. Uh, in Bell 2, they study uh, B part of the case, uh, let's say VD case and reconstruct back to the B bottom particles. And particle therapy, that's something that we did. It. We participated in launching of this activity in 2020 online. It's based on a very complicated software, MATRA for education, uh, very complicated, very expensive, but for education is free of use in this activity, but it's still a bit heavy. In this software, what the students do is change parameters to optimize what would be the uh, treatment plan with a proton beam, carbon beam, or photon beam of a tumor hidden in the body of the person. Of course, uh, this can be a more sensitive issues, especially if there are problems like this in the family of the students participating, but okay. At least they learn that there are new techniques for treating uh, effective techniques for treating hidden tumors. I'm coming to the end, as you might have guessed from these numbers here. Uh, this is also a new measurement coming in to study dark matter, and the data, uh, data analysis by the DXL. So it's not very fun, but hopefully it will come in a more visual analysis, and Dune is the goal to, in this evolution of these neutrino master classes. Also, it's evolving, it's still in preparation, and I don't know much because I also haven't done this measurement yet. Uh, now, I'll discuss a little bit what I call impacts, but uh, it comes in quote unquote because it's not a serious analysis to say it is. Well, the first is the, the growth in Portugal. Of course, it shows that the problem has a high impact. In the best, our best publicity are the students themselves. They tell their colleagues or the colleagues that later on ask the older students, you went there, is it fun? And the answer is, yeah, it's very fun. And this is what justifies, partly what justifies the increase in the number of students, especially because in Portugal, most of the sessions happens on a Saturday. And of course, students that come on a Saturday to spend a day at university, are strongly motivated students, and they have, of course, heard very well that the, the activity is very fun. Otherwise, they would not have come. They would not change the, their holiday time uh, to spend a day working at the university. Also, uh, the number of visits of Portuguese groups to visit CERN, you can see that increased very, very strongly. And now it's very difficult for our poor Portuguese colleagues at CERN to cope with the demand. 
of receiving about 45 50 schools groups per year. You can imagine it's about it's more than one per week because there are some weeks where they don't go. They usually go in a school year, uh, mostly between January and uh, May. They stop going in June, they have exams and the like. In the vacations, but nobody, no school group goes, nor maybe July. So go back in October, usually from October to May. So this number is from October to May, meaning almost two school groups per week, meaning that some Portuguese scientist, researcher, engineer at CERN is guiding them because we strongly motivate our colleagues at CERN to guide these school groups. And this is not counting the Brazilian groups. Brazilian groups are added to this number, uh, but it's not known. It's about one or two Brazilian groups per year that visit CERN, and it's understandable that travel costs 10 times more. Uh, now, these numbers is a bit of saturation that CERN allows to, uh, to get, given that CERN tries to have a country balanced and population balance from the requests of this group visits to CERN, and Portugal is way behind uh, our, let's say, quota. But, but way behind. Uh, you can imagine that Germany is 10 times more population, so it should get about 400 schools. No, they don't. If they would get 400 school groups, they would be there. So it doesn't happen. But they try to balance the requests from uh, the schools. And of course, they have a strong pressure by some people like me to receive Portuguese school groups, which have to pay the travel, fly from afar. They don't get opportunities for open days, all these types of experience. The other impact, which uh, I realized it only recently because I did this, let's say, study uh, in 2018, was actually realizing the evolution of the threshold marks to enter Portuguese universities. So, it's just, I would not call it a fake analysis, but it's an analysis that must be regarded with great care. So, this number is just indicative and estimative. But in, the fact is that by 2004, only one course, this one in yellow, filled the quota. All other proposals did not even fill the vacancies proposed for students to study physics or engineering physics at universities. For the course proposals, only two, actually three courses, this one, this one, and that one. So this is the minimal marks to get in out of 200 points. Minimal marks means that the marks of the last student to enter the course, provided the course was completely filled. So if university course is proposed with, let's say, 30 positions, this is the grade, the marks of the 30th student to get in. If the vacancies are not filled, let's say the marks of the last student to enter was like 14, uh, 140 points, but only 10, point, 10 slots were filled, then I put this number to 100 because it means that if there would be a student with 100 trying to get in, he would get in. So this is what means the number is at 100. Now the evolution. For many years, medicine was at the top of the choices of the Portuguese students, meaning the students that had the highest marks, they all want to go to medicine school, which was a drama for the families, including mine. Um, which was very hard for them to, to go, those that wanted to be, become um, physicians. The topmost engineering course has always been aerospatial engineering at ISD, at the Institute of Superior Technics, so this, it's here for comparison, and all other courses are physics or engineering physics related. You can see that in 2005, it's not brilliant, in 2006, it was a disaster. In 2006 was after, uh, well, 2005 was after or most of the activities associated to the World Year of Physics. So we did a lot of effort to celebrate World Year of Physics 2005. In Portugal, we had the biggest conference of high energy physics, uh, running in Lisboa with a public session in Mafra, where we invited a lot of students to go to Mafra speak to the scientists, where, where we had in the cluster of the cluster of the 
church of the convent, we have a string theorist explaining to a group of students, like when we started speaking, speaking was like five. Uh, when he had it speaking, was like 30. And he had his plate with his dinner, and he didn't eat. And he didn't move the fork to the mouth. He was speaking all the time, about two hours, speaking to the students. They were extremely curious about string theory. I don't know why, but okay, they were <laughs> strongly, strongly curious about it. And still, in 2005 and 2006, the situation was back to disaster. And uh, in 2007, we started the national teachers programs. So we started the master classes here, but you might recognize that when we started the teachers programs and we got an increase in participation in the master classes because of the teachers, we also got an increase of the interest of students following physics courses. A technique, but not only. And about since 2018, all physics courses in Portugal filled up. All, all meaning everywhere. Whereas previous to 2014, only technic filled up. Especially in 2013, only technic filled up. But after 2018, all courses filled up. And Physics and Technique overcame medicine in 2014, the lowest grade in medicine, and the highest grade in medicine in 2016. Uh, now, it's a little bit turned over again. Top medicine went over physics. It's actually the most wanted course this year was, in 2022, was medicine at Porto, Porto University. And, uh, uh, but there was special engineering and physics and technique falling right behind. And in 2022, again, some courses in physics were not filled. And I attribute this to uh, a bit lack of activity. I mean, we didn't have anything in 2021 in presence. Everything. We, didn't have, we didn't have almost anything in 2020. And 2021 was almost all online. So we lost a bit of contact with the school. We stopped going to schools. And this somehow decreases a little bit of interest in physics. But the message is, it does pay off to engage, to go to the schools, to speak to the students at the schools. This is what I like their interest in coming to studying physics, in their um, interest in, uh, in particle physics. Now, my conclusion is a series of opinions. I can only, well, so I believe it's obvious that the problem is very successful since its very start, both worldwide and especially in Portugal. We got an expansion since the beginning and a continuing expansion of the program. We have always get more countries, more institutes, more measurements, and we try also to move to other audiences. It's not that accomplished, it's when it's still only high school students, but we try to move to other younger students, and other types of audiences. We always got a very positive, uh, in this case, a positive feedback, meaning uh, that there is actually a feedback that brings, I mean, we have from the master class program and teachers programs, we have more participants in other activities. And because we have more participants in other activities, we have a lot more participants in master classes. So this is really a positive feedback of the system. I recall that. Uh, especially in Portugal and in other countries, we are saturated. We cannot do any more. I believe that if you could go to more places, we have even more participants. This has given a lot of visibility towards the importance of outreach in our field and to IPOR, the International Particle Physics Outreach Group, which is the flagship activity of IPOR, and is formalized into international collaboration in December 2016. Uh, we have other activities stemming from the master classes, like the Worldwide Data, data Day, or the Big Analysis of Neons and Science and Atlas. These are activities realized online without the presence of a tutor, so there's not really a master class, but there is a video conference of about half an hour at the end of the session. I'm convinced we have a very strong impact in the school communities. They are asking for the dates of the next programs and on the connections scientists, teachers and students. 
But I also I think we have a very strong impact in the science communities. Scientists are more keen, they understand the importance to do outreach and are more keen and open to do outreach. And the experiments and laboratories are more aware and conscious of the need to do outreach and engage the publics. Uh, next year, so next year meaning this year, starting next day 35, we'll restart the program of this year in these dates and places. So you see, we need you. We desperately need everybody that can, even if they think they cannot be a tutor, I can teach to be a tutor. So everyone is welcome and needed, uh, even if they only speak slight Portuguese. Although the Portuguese of Mateo is perfect. So that's not slight Portuguese, that's perfect Portuguese. Okay, and uh, basically, thank you all. But of course, we need all of you. Uh, I also thank to all the students and teachers that participate in the programs, to all the tutors and speakers, and of course, all others that I forgot. Thank you very much. Uh, I might have done a bit over time.